when she cited the constitution of the Republic of Uganda and read for us the attendant laws, I was really pleased and very happy. I now invite your attention, Mr. Speaker, sir, to the national objectives and direct principle of state policy. And specifically, I want to go to principle number 26, accountability. They are short, I would like to read them. The first one says, all public offices shall be held in trust for the people. The second says, all persons placed in positions of leadership and responsibility shall in their work be answerable to the people. The third one says, all lawful measures shall be taken to expose, combat, eradicate corruption and abuse and misuse of power by those holding political and other public offices. This is the command of the Constitution that you, Mr. Speaker, you swore by in the oath for the office of the Speaker. All of us here, members of Parliament, we swore by it. So I really thank the President, but I must thank him because recently, despite being the first citizen, he was driving around and people questioned him to provide answers by virtue of holding the office as a leader, as a political leader. Although his response was not satisfactory to me. When he said, in Kalerwe, you don't have power because you voted for Noob. But at least he answered. At least he answered. That shows that if the president can humble himself and answer and be accountable, why are other political holders of offices in this country so adamant to the level that even the constitu constitutional right of a member of parliament to express themselves, an attempt is made to curtail that. We had to fight as a member of parliament. We have to fight and struggle to be heard on this floor of parliament. Mr. Speaker, my guidance, my, my, the, the guidance I'm seeking from you is that as political leaders of parliament, the right honorable speaker of parliament, the deputy speaker of parliament, the four commissioners of parliament, first, before we go outside, there are questions that have been asked by virtue of the political offices that we hold. Ugandans want those answers. That is why people were marching to come and get the answers from parliament, because we, the representatives, cannot give them the answers they want. We are being accused as parliament that we are corrupt. I'm an MP, I am not corrupt. In fact, I don't know Luganda, but this one hurt me a lot. When I was moving around and I saw people pointing at me, calling me Owechitiwa, I thought it was something nice. Later I was told, it means you're a thief. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> I'm not. Order, oh, honorable colleagues, please listen to honorable Jonathan. So, let's listen to our team, honorable Jonathan. So, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I'm just concluding. I'll give information to you later. Let me conclude on this serious matter. All I am requesting, all I am. Honorable Jonathan, you're all, protected. Let's, all let's I, allow you all I am requesting is that as people who are holding offices in, in trust of the people, can we take an initiative to explain to the people of Uganda 
the questions they ask of us even before they take the drastic step of coming to the street. Because the situation that happened today, most of you, the inconvenience that I had to pass through as a member of parliament to come to do my constitutional duty in office was too much. And we were being harassed. Even some of us who left our IDs, the parliament IDs, it took time for us to be verified to come here. I don't want to go through that every day when I come to work here. So I ask you, Mr. Speaker, that when you retreat to your chambers, think through and all the leaders and provide answers. If you have been accused of A, please try to provide an answer. We don't want Ugandans to come. They are already saying if they cannot access us here in this parliament, they will go to our homes. I cannot take that for granted. Me, I don't have a police officer. I don't have security. Many of you have security, combat what I don't have. I move as I am here. And my home, nobody has visited. I don't want to be accused of being part of the loot, part of the corruption. Each and every person accused should answer in line with the provision of this constitution. And if it may please you, Mr. Speaker, lastly, we have been struggling to bring business on the other paper of this parliament, to discuss this matter. To the extent that colleagues are moving, running away, and yet you can use your discretion as a responsive leader and say, I have seen you struggle. Why must you raise signatures to come and discuss issues of corruption? Why? Why must people be raising signatures? You can respond and say, as a leader of this house, I have decided that this matter is so urgent that we can allow it to be discussed so that you don't go. I beg to submit, Mr. Speaker. Thank you.